Welcome to my long-awaited Blythe doll video. I'm so excited to bring this video to you today. Now, what is Blythe, some of you ask? And now Blythe is a fashion doll that was first released in 1972 uh, in America for one year. And then basically it came back in year 2001 in Japan and they brought it back as Neo Blythe, which Neo means new. Now the lady who made this book, I've got this really old book, I don't know if it's a reprint or not, but um, it's a photograph by G Gina Garan, I hope I'm saying her name right. She's kind of the lady that made it all happen. From This is what I believe anyway, she absolutely loved the original Blythe dolls. She had made a photo book basically, she took photographs of them all over the place and uh, it just made them popular again. So she basically, Blythe um, is a fashion doll. She's 28 point, what is she, 28.5 centimetres tall. She's got a great fruit size head. She's got a pull cord at the back that you pull it and her eyes change colour. She'll have four different colour eyes, uh, but two of them will be front facing and one will be left facing and one will be right facing. Now, Blythe, official Blythe dolls, they generally have a standard eye colour and uh, but you do get specials which will change them. So I'm going to be talking to you today about real authentic Blythe's and the fake as well and show you some differences and things. Now um, anything that I don't have I'll put photographs up on the screen and anything I can show you I'll show you in person and I'll also put my own photographs up on the screen. So you might need a cuppa. I might have to stop and grab a cuppa for myself actually because I'm feeling dry already. And luckily my nose isn't running. Anyone that knows me well knows my nose runs all the time. Now if you don't know who I am, I'm Claire. My channel is called Claire Who Makes Things. My channel was all about the things I make, but slowly over time, I've started a new series called The Doll Diaries. So I have the Stitch Diaries, where it's sewing, knitting, crochet, things like that, or anything else I'm making. And then I've got The Doll Diaries, but they do cross over a little bit because I make things for dolls. So this is The Doll Diaries today, and this is going to be about live dolls there may be a barbie popping up in this video uh, but the, for good reason but yeah it's not really going to be about barbie dolls or harry potter dolls or anything or disney dolls today it is going to be live dolls and you might be able to see a few little faces in the background now i've got some notes so where do we start now what you people think well shall i buy a real shall i buy fake where do i get them from i've had a number of questions since i've started this hobby of blithe dolls in march now i was aware of blithe dolls before march this year but i looked into it i thought they're out of my budget and then I just kind of left it but I realised there are dolls real and fake and you know for every budget and you can get the real if that's what you really really want um, from people selling them as well which can be a bit cheaper sometimes they're more expensive because they can you know double or triple in price you know because there's only a certain amount of each doll that comes out that they make so you can get them at a pre-order price from places like juni moon and uh, i know C, uh, cc toys sell them i don't know if you can pre-order from them but you definitely get dolls from them and uh you can get a pre-order price from juni moon and then they will go up when it get, comes out for general release and then when they sell out they sell out and then if you try and buy them off someone you're probably going to pay even more that's the way it goes so uh, and even ones out of the box seem to still hold their price um, quite well as well probably not as much as the box but yeah they do hold their price now what is the difference um, between them now obviously the fakes um, cost a lot less but they come to you a lot different and they are different now I have I've had one delivered today actually so a fake so it'd be a good way to show you and it's in this one. Now, let me grab the scissors from under my chair. They're not under my chair. Bear with me. <laughs> there he. <laughs> oh, I'll turn my cushion. Well, it's my uh, son's cushion. Actually, uh, my regular viewers probably wonder where I am. I'm, I'm actually moving into a. This is my temporary craft room. Uh, 
doll slash uh, craft room and I've started moving into it so I'm not totally moved into it because we've been actually taking the remain remaining furniture out of here so I will be able to start moving in properly now so yeah I'll, I won't you know film while I'm opening the whole thing I'll cut it out right there's more than one thing I've ordered in here so I will take I will take those out actually I've got some spare hands which I'll talk to you about and an eye mechanism which I'll, I'll show you as well but generally if you order like a fake doll somewhere from like China like from AliExpress this is how it's going to come wrapped up like this bubble wrap possibly a protective um, cover on it like this this one has some of them don't a bit of plastic around it and uh, I'll get I'll get the bubble wrap off. This is exciting. <laughs> now, I generally, when I'm taking the doll out, I won't pull from the feet. I like to cut the plastic off the top so I can slide her out that way. Have you seen her hair? <laughs> so, we needed some fantasy hair, didn't we? I haven't got any of the fantasy hair. I'll tell you how I ended up getting this girl later on in this video. So there she is, she's got her plastic on. Oh, she's gorgeous. So face mould off. And she's got plastic on her head. Now I like to do this with it, pull it down. Because I don't want to wreck nice hair. Now I'll try and cover her modesty. Oh, this makes me laugh actually. When these come, their pull cords are wrapped around their necks, or well, some of them. And I, I say, it's like the umbilical cord, isn't it? R wrapped around the baby's neck. <laughs> so the only thing, I'll try and cover up. The only thing remaining now is she's got some plastic around her head here, which I'm going to tear off. Right here she is, isn't she gorgeous? Look at that lovely long pink hair. Right, I am gonna pop her down for a moment, but I will show you a body without a head because I've got one here to show you and I'll show you a real Takara body. So this is like the body I just showed you, the fake. Now it's very jointed, it's you know, got lots of articulation and you can swap the hands. Now some of the dolls, will come with hands and some of them don't come with hands um so yeah you, you do have to watch if you're ordering from aliexpress you do need to check that so i actually um bought a doll that i've paid more for on aliexpress than i've ever paid before and i didn't get any hands with it and she's a different skin tone to any of the others so i've got to well i don't know if those are the hands actually those might be the hands i'll have to check actually so well anyway this is the uh, the fake body you know um you know there's you can see where all the jo the joins are you can see where the articulation is and you can get, get her doing lots of things you can like kneel down and you know sit like this cro cross legs you know you know and many many things which is great and lots of arm things and as i say you can change your hands you can have like the p p sign and you know hands holding things which is really very good so that's one of the, that's how a fake one generally looks now you can get fakes that have bodies like the the original bodies and they look like this now i bought this from an ebay seller who sold me this and a head front plate and back plate, an authentic blithe. That's what they sold it to me as. So, you know, who knows? You never know, do you? But, they, but uh, this is what they look like. They're very like vintage style. They, um, you know, they've got some articulation, the front going like this up and down. And, uh, you know, the legs bend like this. And they do have some bendability in the knees. They've got rubbery legs. Now, I think this one is faulty because that one goes about there. I think it's the right one. <laughs> yeah, I think my right leg on this, That's maybe that's why they were selling it. It They kind of don't sit together. They're like that. Now, I wanted these for dressmaking purposes. Actually, I've got the teeny 
I've got another one actually. Now I haven't got a mid, now there's three different sizes of live, which I haven't got into yet. There's the Neo, which, you know, Neo obviously means new, but that's what we associate with the this size that you can kind of see on here, which I'll, the one I just showed you. There's midi size, which isn't the next one down, and a petite size. Now, I've taken, I've made clothes um, for my dolls, and I took this photograph of one of my Neo size, my only midi, and my only petite. So I'll pop that photograph on the screen. So Isabella is the, the taller one, that's what I've named her. And I've got Matilda who is my um, midi and Wilma is my only petite. So, and uh, yeah, so the, the clothes have been getting smaller, but I ordered this. I, I actually, I started to doubt whether I ordered it or not because it took so long to come, but it's a body. That's a petite body, apparently authentic, but I don't know, that's what I, it was sold me at. But they're very similar to this and uh, the knees bend like that. The arms just go forward and back. So basically, like the large one. Uh, now this is a um, a tanned body. Now you can get all different skin tones as well with Blythe. So I'm going to get my notes actually because I don't want to forget things. So we're talking about the real and fake. Now basically, when you get the fakes, generally they're go they're going to come naked the seller if you know i've bought a pair of shoes for my midi who came naked and then they threw in this little dress this little orange alternate thing i'll put a photograph on the screen i ordered her the same time i ordered wilma and wilma you'll see in the photograph she came in a felt purple dress but i've since taken them out and obviously i've re i've made clothes and i'll put some photographs on the screen i've made clothes for them so i don't mind dolls coming naked because i you know i need to crochet also and i like making clothes so yeah it doesn't bother me but having said this if you're not someone that does that you might not want a doll to arrive naked and you are going to have a big expense you're gonna to have to buy uh, underwear, uh, if you want them to have underwear, shoes, um, clothes, accessories, maybe you want a doll stand, you know what I'm saying? All these things are going to add up. Now, if you have a, an authentic live, you're going to get a gorgeous box that normally the box, it all matches with the outfit, it's a theme, you get, it gets a name, you get told what colour your doll's skin is, what colour her hair is, uh, what colour is on her lips, how, I'm sure they tell you how many of them they make these days, I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I um, think that's a possibility, and uh, yeah, you get lots of information, you get a doll stand, now the doll stands that you get with them look like this, and on the cardboard box, the gorgeous cardboard boxes you get now hopefully are oh, some photographs been popping up on the screen they you peel you pop it out and then you fit it onto there and then it's all themed now i bought these from three of them from ebay and they're not authentic because the authentic ones actually have a print on them they say blithe so these are definitely not authentic but you can you can get these overseas as well. But I bought them from a seller, and I bought a pink one, a blue one, and a yellow one. Now I do have another kind of stand. It's not in the room actually. I have to go and grab it in this video. And uh, you basically you it's got like a little thing that you poke in a hole in the back of the head and uh, it's where the spring there's a spring on the back of these dolls which i'll explain more about you dig it into there and then you kind of you know prop it back and it's a bit more invisible uh, when you went to photograph your dolls so i have used that on a photograph them so yeah that's a big difference now price wise um you know you can look on ebay and things people do sell their box dolls but if you want to get one that nobody has owned and things you can you know if you go to like juni moon the the cost is in in yen is it what uh, the Japanese yen isn't it it's in yen you can try and you know translate what the currency to your currency but then you've got to add tax 
tracks and shipping and things you could be looking at now somebody said it cost them 140 pound to get one in the country but i think that what they might not have included delivery so you are you do need to it'd be good to have a cup you know a couple of hundred pound you know some i've seen you know 300 400 500 now if you want a really old vintage one you could be looking at thousands so but if you want like a current one you know you've got to have a bit of money but if you're buying fakes you know you can pick them up as cheap as 15 pound now there are even cheaper fakes but they don't look great quality i've seen but i've been lucky with mine so far so but yeah and as i say i don't mind making all the clothes for them so there are so, and as well the the value of my doll would you know has it gone up i suppose it could go up in value as in you know i've made it, it i've put a one of a kind outfit on it like i'm not selling my dolls anyway i'm keeping them but if you buy an authentic doll you it's more of an investment because it's going to increase in price even if you get it out the box you're going to get some decent money for it back usually but um with a, like a fake do you know what i'm saying people might think oh, i'll just go and work with a brand new one but there's and then there's customization that's a whole nother thing there's people including myself but i don't sell who customize real blithes and the fake ones so you know there's all that and then sometimes they charge you know i've seen those for like between 60 pound or you know um, thousands you know what i'm saying because they put you know them in a nice box and they put them with loads of outfits and they do artwork on the back of the heads and it's you know this basically there is something for everybody's budget but you know i'm just get, letting you you know the pros and cons are going for fake real you know customized and things and um, sometimes if you get a customized one it's expensive you don't really know what you're going to get sometimes they want to surprise you so other differences now a real blithe some of them will come with ears pierced with earrings and some of them won't even have their ears pierced now what i have found so far with all my fakies they've all come with pierced ears but none of them have any earrings so i found out or oh, what can i get to put earrings in their ears now somebody recommends this seller on etsy and it's um uh, Olga Henderson Blythe Bijou Boutique Jewelry for Dolls and basically I bought these pins they're like two headed pins that like that it's one thing that loops round and basically you I can attach things because I can make jewellery again I make jewellery so that's not an issue for me uh, I suppose you could buy look up Blythe earrings I suppose you could find some but I could make some earrings and put, attach them to these pins but at the minute none of them have got any earrings in so I can't show you an example of that but you can imagine it's a bit like a hair grip that I'll be stuffing in the ear but obviously I'll attach things first but there are ways of attaching earrings when the head is apart and then fixing them at the back but then they're not going to be removable not unless you take the head apart again so that's another thing so now faces shiny and matte now i believe the authentic blithe they generally are shiny but they do have matte and they do have different skin tones now it's the same with the fakes some are shiny some are matte and then and you've got a lot more choice with the fakes now blithe if authentic have got a lot more diverse they have got you know a dark skinned girl but i don't think they've got a dark skinned with an an afro as far as i know but if you go you know for the fakes you could get a black afro a red afro a pink afro a blue afro do you know what i'm saying you, there's a lot more choice with the fakes if you're after something more uh you know to your taste and you know blithe haven't got it so 
where where else are we so skin colors now there have been so i have heard somebody on youtube say they they've had dolls where their face doesn't match their body when they've had fakes now i must admit when i've been looking at fakes i have noticed that sometimes i've seen dolls that have got extremely white faces i haven't got any of them with the really white faces and their body just looks a little bit darker now that might not bother some people if they're going to have it fully clothed you're never going to see the body but I don't, or maybe they could change the body for a lighter skin I don't know so another thing is eyebrows now I don't know if Blythe dolls get eyebrows the authentic ones any of them I'm not sure but I don't think I own a doll with any eyebrows now a lot of customizers put eyebrows on but I have two customised ones that came to me customised and they don't have eyebrows. I'll double check the dolls, but yeah, I've got dolls, none of them got eyebrows. But if you have a look out there, you'll see customisers that have carved faces, put eyebrows on, repainted, and they look very different to the original Blythes. So, now another thing you're going to get if you get a stock Blythe, there's different face moulds and you will find out what mould your Blythe doll is. Now in all honesty, they don't look extremely different, it's nothing too extreme looking. Now I've seen some dolls on AliExpress fakes that, now some of mine have been called icy but i know the eye proper icy they have a different look they have a different shape eye socket and uh, i'll probably put some on the screen but i don't own it at the moment but yeah they look very different but generally they all look pretty similar unless they've been heavily customized now the uh, i'm just looking at other notes i've got here now um hasbro own Blive, authentic Blive, and it was Takara that was making them, and I think it was till about 2001, maybe 2002, somewhere around that region. But now the Good Smile Company are now making them, and they've got like a quite a few dolls that have come out since they've been making them. But Hasbro still still own them, basically. So I think that is a lot of the chat. And now if there's something I've missed, please, um, you know, if you're more experienced, please put it in the comments. Uh, you know, I'd love to know, but I'll probably speak about more things as I show you my dolls. Now, now a few of you have had some sneaky peeks of, um, of the dolls in my Stitch Diary videos, but this is my first official uh, video on Blythe. Now, my first doll is Lily, and she's a fake, and I wanted a blonde, like a platinum blonde, I wanted tanned and I wanted a matte face, that's what I was after. And she's here. Now, I got her from eBay. Now, I can tell she's like an AliExpress doll, because now I've got them, um, like the fake ones. Now, I said to this, I asked the seller, is she real or fake? Because I didn't know at the time. I'm, gu I'm guessing she's fake, but they didn't reply to that question. Um, it didn't bother me anyway, I wanted her. But the seller had her up for, I think, 50 something, but I did knock her down. And um, and the, this doll is still on there, actually. It's the same photograph, they use the same photograph, so it definitely wasn't my doll. Now, this doll did come with clothes on. She came in this T-shirt and this skirt, but I have knitted this cardigan. I got this pattern from um, Ravelry, which is a knitter's uh, library. It's the eyelid cardigan. And uh, I've knitted her some socks. Uh, that was on... Um, I'll put it up on the screen. I can't remember, but it, it's where you buy knitting needles and things. Somebody shared it in a Blythe group, and I've knitted it in mohair and really tiny needles. Now, uh, Blythe dolls, they have they kind of the heads kind of tilt down, and she's got her right face in brown eyes at the moment. Now, when I first had her, I was absolutely terrified of changing her eyes. Now, it's best to pull the cord in that position, which I'm going to do. So they click and then she's got the front face in pink eyes, which people say they're the, sca the starey eyes. I don't know if I'm going to change them on Lily actually. Then she's got the side face in grey. Now I must admit the side facing I find look nicest in the photographs. 
I don't care for these ones too much really, the front facing blue, but they might be somebody's uh, bag, um, the front facing blue mightn't they? So uh, yeah, so she's lovely and she's tanned, obviously she's jointed and uh, yeah, I've, I've imagined a whole little personality for her, uh, she likes frogs and I knitted this little Freya the Frog and I generally have her carrying that round and the hand I have in is like one that's kind of gripping so she's always carrying Freya the frog around now I haven't made any modifications to Li Lily as of yet I will be but I haven't made a decision on a few things so I've held fire she's my first precious girl so yeah it's a big decision on what I do. I definitely will be giving her neck articulation, which I'll show you what a neck joint looks like from Beth Ransdom in this video. But yeah, at the moment, um, yeah, I haven't made a decision what I'm going to do about her eyes and things. I will I will be giving her sleepy eyes, which is another thing I'll show you in this video. At the moment, she can't have, she can't stay asleep and uh, she can't she's she's got limited articulation on her neck so i'll pop her back on the shelf now my second girl to arrive to me is isabel now actually i'll pop some photographs up of like lily on the screen and things for you to see if i haven't already now my next girl is isabel now I didn't make this t-shirt, but I'll pop some photographs in. I did knit her a jumper. Now, this is where it all came about. Um, Arnie and Carlos um, are knitwear designers, and they brought out a Blythe jumper because they've got Blythe dolls. Not as many as I have, but they've got Blythe. I think they've got one real and one fake, so I know. And I know they've got wigs and things. And uh, so basically, they designed this pattern. It's £6 to buy, but at the time I got it for free. I want, I knitted this jumper before a doll arrived. I was going to put it on Lily, but Lily then came like that and I liked it. So then I ordered another one. I wanted one with long hair, basically. And uh, so, yeah, but then as it happened, because I wanted to do things with it, but as it happened, it's all curly and I've not really felt like I want to do anything to it. So, uh, so anyway, well, she, at the moment she's kneeling. Now I have done modification on her now. And uh, since the photographs that I showed you when she was with Matilda and Wilma, my petite. Now, um, you may be able to see here, these were her pink front facing eyes, but now she's got a more natural light blue eye. And uh, I don't know if I'm keeping those there or changing them. I'm not entirely sure yet. And uh, are those are the, the pierced ears, look. Now, she's got two pull cords now because she's got the sleep eye that I've given her. Now, I know not everybody has the capability to do this, but there are people that will do it for you or you can buy your dolls or people have already done it. So I've made a nice uh, chain. Actually, it's frozen themed, actually. <laughs> so it's like that. So if I change her eye colour, her eyes will stay closed. So I've changed two of her chips. So I'll do the first one. So when I pull her eye cord, her eyes stay closed. So she's a sleepy girl, which I absolutely love them to be able to sleep. Then I have to pull the new cord and her eyes open. So those are her, her left facing grey that she came with. that again the pull cord the original one those are the front facing blue so did i change those i didn't i've never changed those so she's only got one new pair of eye chips sorry only one so she's just lost the pink the scary pink open them up again and the right are they right facing yeah right facing brown which I really love those as well. So yeah, so that is how Isabel is looking at the moment. And yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna be making any more changes to her eyes. Oh, and I give her the neck joint. So, shall I get a next to, next to Lily? Now I'll put a photograph actually of her sitting in the middle of two other dolls and see her head there in that photograph. She can lift her head up next to the two girls that can't. So here is Lily. Hello. 
Hello. Are you ready? Oh, is it time to go? <laughs> You're getting slightly nearly time to go, yeah? All right, okay. All right, I'll finish up, okay? Right, I've got to... <laughs> now, don't worry. Um, There'll be no gap for you. I will be back in one second. But, yeah, I've got I've got tennis practice, so, yeah, I've got to go now. And uh, I'll, see you. I'll see you in a moment. Right, I'm back. Now, I'm really sorry I had to rush off to tennis. It's now the next day. Now, I've actually filmed the second part of this video and I think it's going to be rather long putting it in one piece of video. So I'm going to break it up into two parts. So this is the end of part one of my video. So please join me for part two. I'll see you there. Bye.